top 10 anime plot twists. My long hair is gone. Hair. Uh, also, I'm back. Uh, I'm back on YouTube, back uploading videos again. I'm back on my bullshit. So what am I back to talk to you about today? Well, believe it or not, it's the first lore series. Because it's my favourite fantasy series and I won't bloody shut up about it. Try and, try and stop me. Could probably stop me quite easily, you just have to pause the video, but... But don't, please, please do keep watching. I've already done my pitching a pilot video for the first lore series, but I've been thinking, you know, what kind of actors could populate such a series if it existed? And if any TV executives are watching this, Make a bloody First Lore adaptation, it's it's about damn time. So which actors will be taking part in the in the hypothetical First Lore TV show? Not all of my casting choices are set in stone, in fact there are some actors who I think could very well take on multiple roles in the series. Not not at the same time, but like, I, either one would suit them. And then there's some characters who I have multiple actors who I think could take on that part. And so I'll just, I'll go through them one by one and we'll get through it, shall we? Let's start with everyone's favourite war criminal, Sand Dan Glockta. Good old Sand, Sandy Boy, is one of those characters who I actually have multiple ideas about actors who could play them. I've looked at a few fan casting lists already before making this uh, video, and a popular choice for Sand Dan Glockta does appear to be Paul Bettany. I've seen that one a lot, and yeah, I can definitely picture that. I like that a lot. I think he's got the chops to pull it off. And in WandaVision, there is one specific scene in, I think, episode 4 or 5, where that man can act. He is a fantastic actor, and I think he could definitely take the sort of, the sarcastic, cynical approach of Sand Dan Glockter. So I think Paul Bettany would make a fine Glockter. Some other actors that I had in mind, I did the first time that I was reading Blade itself quite often picture Mads Mikkelsen as the role of Glockter. I also think someone like Mark Strong could do it well because he's got a very intimidating presence when he when he plays a bad guy. Also, after seeing him in Shadow and Bone, I definitely could picture Freddy Carter doing the role of Glockter. Really enjoyed him as Kaz in that show and I think he could be a, a good Glockter in a First Law TV show. Of those three, I think Paul Bettany is probably my preferred option. As to Glockter's main supporting cast, if you will, I don't have any choices for Severard and Frost. I don't have any particular strong feelings about who would play those characters, but I do think that for Practical Vitari, Lena Headey would be an excellent choice. Put a bright orange wheel on her or, or dye her hair, and she could absolutely command that role. She can fight, she can be snarky, she can be everything that Vitari is. And then we've also got Arch Lecter Salt, Sandan Glockter's boss. In an ideal world, the First Lord TV show would already have been made, and Christopher Lee would have that role, but of course, very sadly, he passed away. However, I do think that Charles Dance as Arch Lecter Salt could bring an equal amount of gravitas and charisma and presence to that role. So, Charles Dance for Arch Lecter Salt. The West siblings now, let's talk about them. I like gesticulating with this, it feels right. It feels right especially for a First Law based video. I have two possible candidates for Colin West. My first one is Ben Mansfield. Now, he is probably best known for playing Becker in the Primeval TV series, which I am a big fan of, and Becker was one of my favourite characters from that. I've not seen that actor in much else, but it, it would be great to see him in more things, so Put him in the first law. He's the right age for West, he's played a soldier before, he can handle action and emotion equally, and I just think he's neat. So I definitely enjoy seeing him as West. The other actor that I have in mind is Jack Davenport, who played Norrington in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and he also played the original Lancelot in Kingsman. He, I think, also could absolutely nail the role of West. Could definitely picture him doing some of the things he does in the second book. Uh, I'm not gonna say what they are because of spoilers, but West's chapters in the second book are definitely my favorite from him. The journey that he goes on is an absolute highlight of that book for me, and I can picture Jack Davenport pulling that off. Also again, I've just not seen him in that many things as like a main character aside from Pirates of the Caribbean, and I think he's he's good. A lot of these casting choices do just boil down to, I just think he's neat, so so why not? R.D. West now. I have a hard time picturing an actor for R.D. West. No one immediately ever sprung to mind as I was reading off the page. As I was compiling this list, I did think about maybe Jessica Henwick. I think she is an absolutely fantastic actress. I saw her in Love and Monsters recently, and she was great in that. Her character in Iron Fist was the the only thing holding that show together. This is another case of I just think she's neat. So that's the Inquisition and the West siblings. Let's talk about the Dogman now. Dogman is another one that I had a hard time actually picking uh, a casting choice for. When I first read the books, I pictured, um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who played F uh, Faramir. David Wenham. 
But I've since then changed my mind, and I think that the casting choice for the Dogman that I much prefer is Christopher Eccleston. I could absolutely see him being the Dogman. Put him in a long wig, give him a bow and arrow and let him go snooping around in the woods, I think he could do it. Also, he's got a northern accent, and Dogman is a northerner, so it all works out. Uh, I don't actually have any d definitive casting ideas t for the rest of the Dogman's crew. I can think of actors that might fit in in that crew, or just in the North in general, but no specific actor to specific character that really sticks out in my mind. So yeah, Christopher Eccleston as the Dogman. And that brings us to Baez's Fellowship, the Discount Avengers, the Bargain Baez Justice League. I'm also going to include Yulwey and Yoru as part of the Fellowship, because while I don't actually go on the quest, they are privy to the plans and they know about it. For Yulwey, I don't have a specific casting in mind, but I have seen on a few different casting lists Jimon Honsu. I think I'm saying that Name right. He's the guy in Guardians of the Galaxy who goes, who? You know, that guy. Uh, and I think, yeah, I can definitely see him being your way. I like that casting choice, so I'm not gonna change it from the people who came before me doing First Law fan casts. Perfectly happy with him as Yulwei. I can definitely see that working. I've also seen people casting Kumail Nanjiadi for Brother Longfoot. And again, I never had a specific actor in mind when I was reading Brother Longfoot, but I could definitely see him pulling it off. I like that actor. I think he'd be good. So yeah, happy with that. So now let's get into some of the big guns of the series. Some of the characters who actually go on the quest. Some of the big, juicy main characters who you came here to hear me talk about. I am of course talking about Malachus Kwai. <laughs> Funnily enough, I actually do have a very strong casting choice for Malakus. There's an actor called Rasmus Hardiker, or Hardiker, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but when I read about Malakus on the page, I picture this guy. He's usually done more sort of comedic roles in things. He was in a film called The Magicians with uh, Mitchell and Webb, but I think that comedic sensibility will work in his favour, especially early on, when he's just kind of a bumbling sidekick to Baez, and when Logan's getting in fights and he has to just scamper out of the way and hide because he's no good at fighting or anything. This might, this might be the strongest strongest casting choice on, on, on the entire list in terms of how strongly I feel about it. Like, there's no other Malachus. Rasmus Hardiker should be Malachus. Jot it down. If you're Rasmus Hardiker's uh, casting agent, get, get on the phone to him, get him to read these books. Get him, get him in there. Now, Jezel Dan Luther. I can very easily picture what Jezel looks like in my mind, but I, I have had a very hard time finding an actor who fits that uh, that image. I know a few people have put on their own casting lists Nikolai Costa Waldo, and I think maybe if it was still 2011, I think these days he's, he's too old for Jezel. Jezel is a young man, and, and Nikolai is, is 51. He's a great actor, I absolutely love him. I could get get him in the series in some role, but he, he's too old to be Jezel. Uh, another actor I thought about is the actor who played <laughs> Tom and Baratheon, but he's too, on the on the flip side, he's too young, I think. And then, on certain other fan casting lists, I have seen the name Douglas Booth pop up. Now, I've not actually seen him in anything, but I've had a look at some clips of him on, on YouTube from Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and I have to say, he absolutely looks perfect for the part of Jezel. This is th this is the image that I was trying to picture when I was talking about it. That is, that's Jezel right there. That's what he looks like. That's him. So yeah, 100% on board with that as a casting choice, and, I, and I'm gonna t t take that and make it also, I agree with that, that's also my casting choice. The only other actor that I had th thought might be able to do it, although he's still a little on the young side, is Otto Farrant, who is currently playing Alex Ryder in the Amazon Alex Ryder TV show. He's very good in that. I think it would be fun to see him playing cocky arrogant Jezel in the uh, in the early episodes but yeah I think overall Douglas Booth is 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 the best choice for Jezel. Feral Maljin. Up until like a week ago, I would have absolutely hands down said Denai Guerrero is th the only choice for Pharaoh. When I first read the books, I definitely pictured Michonne from The Walking Dead. I think she is excellent. I've always pictured her as that until I watched Us the other week. Lupita Nyong'o in, in that delivers a, a physical performance that very much reminded me of Pharaoh, and actually now I'm not sure which of those two actors I prefer as Pharaoh. Either one of them would be great, they're both great actors, they could both absolutely pull it off. But yeah, well I, I, I was originally gonna say Denai Guerrero in this video, but actually I think I'm gonna have to change it to, to putting Lupita Nyong'o as my number one choice for Pharaoh Maljin. And that brings us to the one you've really been waiting for, Yoru Sulfur. <laughs> No, it's, it's Logan. Let's do Logan Nine Fingers. Let's talk about the best actor who could play Logan Nine Fingers. Logan of the Nine Fingers. 
knives. You can never have too many knives. I know that the popular choice for Logan when it comes to fan casting is Tom Hardy, and I could definitely see him being Logan, but I do have a few ideas of my own. So I have two possibilities for Logan. One of them is a big name, one of them is a little lesser known. I actually think that Carl Urban could make a fantastic Logan. He's got the physicality, he could definitely play a jaded old warrior, he's got the recognizability that would bring new fans into the series. He can definitely pull off that kind of grim humor that Logan relies on, especially if you consider his performance in The Boys. Slap a long wig on Carl Urban and get him in the role. I could definitely see that working. My other option for Logan, the lesser known actor, is an actor called Clive Standen. Now, he was in Vikings, the show. He played the brother of the main character and he was really good and I can definitely picture him as Logan as well. He's got the right sort of look, he's the right sort of age, like he's old enough that he can have lived a life before the show begins. Because, you know, Logan has lived a very long life. He's had a wife and children that he lost and then he's and then he joined Bethod's crew and then built up this legacy around him. Like, L Logan is an old, or at the very least a middle-aged man, but when you take into account the constraints of live action, he still has to be someone who's young enough that they can handle a decent amount of action scenes. And Clive Standen can. He can be the big wall of brute force that Logan is when he fights, and he can also do the more sort of fatherly slash big brotherly affection that Logan develops for the rest of the people on the team. I really enjoyed his performance in Vikings, I think it'd be cool to see him in more big things. Although if he wasn't Logan, I do also think that uh, Clive Standin could be uh, a very good casting choice for Cole Shivers, who turns up later on in the series. Logan or Shivers, he, he could play either one. Two very interesting characters to think about the same actor being them. But yeah, when it comes down to picking just one, I think I'm gonna say Clive Standin for Logan. I think I'm gonna... I'm gonna make him my stand-in. And now we've only got two names left on the casting. We've got Yoru Sulfur and we've got Lord Bias, first of the Magi. Here's who I would ideally cast in those roles. Billy Boyd and Kelsey Grammer are my choices for those two. Yoru is often described as being like able to blend in with a crowd pretty well. Like the only thing noticeable about him is that there's nothing noticeable about him. And I think when he's not dressed like Pippin, Billy Boyd can absolutely pull off that sort of everyman quality. And for Kelsey Grammer as Bayaz, I never know what to say Bayaz or Bayaz, and I, I feel like I'm alternating it every time I say it. <laughs> I think Kelsey Grammer has the sort of sophistication and a charm. People will associate him with Fraser Crane, and that's just gonna be brilliant for meme potential alone. But I also do think Kelsey Grammer is a very good actor. He's much more than just Fraser Crane. He can be kind and grandfatherly, but he can also have a temper when the situation demands for it, and sometimes Bayaz does. I also have another reason for casting those two actors specifically in those two roles. However, it is a very, very spoilerific reason. So if you have not read the series all the way through, if you have not finished Last Argument of Kings, skip this next bit. Especially if you're a close friend of mine who I know has only read the first one at this point. Do not listen to what I'm about to say. That has been your spoiler warning. You have been spoiler warned. I am gonna say some spoilers now. The other reason that I think Kelsey Grammer and Billy Boyd work as Yoru and Bayaz is they are both associated with good characters. When you think of Billy Boyd, you think of Pippin from Lord of the Rings, and when you think of Kelsey Grammer, you think of Beast from the X-Men. No, you think of Fraser Crane. And sure, Fraser's a pompous ass sometimes, but he is ultimately a good guy. He has a warmth and kindness and a devotion to his friends. The fact that these actors come from prior franchises where they were where they were morally good and endearing characters will mean an audience watching the first lore is more likely to be endeared towards them, which will make the twist that they're not that at all be all the more satisfying. The revelation that Bayaz doesn't care about the greater good, he's just after ex accentuating his own power, and that Yoru is a f***ing eater? That's gonna be so much more impactful if they are played by actors who an audience feels an inclination to trust because of their previous roles. Having Pippin and Frasier on the scene will lull everyone into a false sense of security, and then, when their guard is down, the knife drops and the reveal is it's, blo it's blown wide open, literally. And so, as well as them being very good actors in their own right and being suited to the roles in other senses, that I think is what ultimately makes me so excited about those two particular casting choices. And so that is the Fellowship of the Seed taken care of, and that is all the casting options that I have. That is my fan casting for the first Law series. Hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on while waving a small blade around. If you disagree with any of my choices or have any of your own casting choices you want to put in the comments below, please go ahead and do that. I'll happily read them and discuss actors in the comments. If you liked this video, give it a big ol' like, and if you want to see more from me, then please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in my next one.
and the seed of doom.